Right. This is a 27 inch 5K iMac. This is a 24 inch M1 iMac. And this is a brand new M3 iMac. And I want to know how far we've come from Intel to M1 to M3. And I have no idea how this test is gonna turn out. This feels like it's been a long time coming, doesn't it? It's been over 900 days since the M1 24 inch iMac was introduced. But now we have its successor, the M3 version. And I bet a lot of you are thinking about buying one. But I bet a lot of the people watching this video have an Intel iMac and you're thinking, is it worth upgrading to this? How far have we come in performance? Is it worth downgrading from that lovely 27 inch display to the 24 inch display? And what do you get for your money with the M3. Now, as always, guys, I've bought the base model M3 iMac. It's got eight gigabytes of unified memory, the 256 gigabyte SSD. It is the cheapest, in inverted commas, version you can buy. And the reason I do that is because I want to see that base level performance. What do you get if you spend the least amount of money possible on a new iMac? Before we get started, though, the very first piece of software, pretty much, that I put on the iMac is a password manager. And my recommendation for that is Roboform, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. And the reason I put that on here straight away is because password managers save a huge amount of time when you're setting up a new Mac, but also when you're using it. And the reason for that is that all of your usernames, passwords, secret notes, and details that you want to keep away from prying eyes are in one very, very secure vault. And it suggests new passwords for new login details, and it stores all of that stuff secure automatically without you having to lift a finger. And it has this game-changing one-click login feature, which is literally just one click. You press a button and you're in straight away. And Roboform works across every single device you have, whether it be a Mac or an iPhone, an Android device, Windows. You can also securely share login details with friends and family, and it has an emergency access feature, which means if something happens and you can't access your passwords, someone else can. You give that access to someone that you trust and they can get in for you. And if anything goes wrong, which it never has with Roboform for me, they have 24 seven support. And if you're wondering, Roboform has a solid no breach history. So your login details are very, very safe. And the best news is I've worked with Roboform to get a massive 50% discount on Roboform Premium. That makes it a total no brainer. To find out more, click that link below. Right, in terms of this test, this isn't a complicated benchmark. It's not for me. I find that slightly boring. So instead, I'm going to do a very real world relevant test for me. On here, I have a piece of 4K 10 bit footage shot on this camera, which is a Sony FX3. It's 10 minutes long, it's about seven, eight gig in size, and I want to do two things with it on these iMacs. The first one is a very quick color grade and render. And secondly, I want to export it to an MOV file. And what I'll do is time each of those processes with my phone. The reason I'm doing these tests is because they are very important to me. So the quicker I can render and export stuff, the faster I can work. And yes, I know that these tests may not be relevant to whatever you're going to do with your iMac, but it does give us a very good idea of what they're capable of. To make this test as fair as possible, I've done fresh installs of macOS on all three iMacs. The 27 inch iMac will only go as far as Ventura, so that's all I could do with this one, but the M3 and the M1 iMac are both running the latest version of Sonoma. But they're all running the latest version of Final Cut Pro, which at the time of filming is 10.6. 6.10. Okay, we'll start with the 27 inch 5K iMac. I bought this in 2017. And if you're wondering about the spec, I did have to remind myself, it's the 3.5 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i5. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM, which I upgraded myself from 16 because these are the last iMacs that you could self upgrade. In terms of graphical power, it has a Radeon 575 with four gigabytes and it has a 256 gig SSD. Right, we'll start with the render and the way that I do this is by doing a very quick color grade just to get that render process going. So we'll do a bit of saturation, a bit of contrast. This is very, very rough and ready, but it's just to get that render process going. Okay, that's all good. So fingers at the ready. I've got my background tasks open. 
This is going to require lots of fingers, but here we go, and away. Now, I've not done any video editing on this Mac for many years, but it was my main production machine in my previous business, and I really relied on it. And back then, it felt really quick. And back then, it was the most expensive Mac I'd ever bought. I think it was about two and a half grand, but it was the most powerful Mac I'd ever owned. And that's why at the Scary Fast event back in October, Apple kept referring to Intel machines. Machines. They have the numbers, they know that loads of people are still using Intel Macs, and they want to get them onto the M3. Right, we're 7 minutes and 35 seconds in, and 65% done. 10 minutes and 10 seconds, and 88% done. Ninety six percent, ninety nine percent done. Eleven minutes and twenty eight seconds for the render. Right onto the export, and if you're wondering, I use the video and audio format and the H.264 codec, and the resulting file size four point two eight gig. We're away. Okay, one minute and 15 seconds in, and we are 26% done. This is motoring along a bit quicker than the render, and it's a very important test because the quicker you can get video out of Final Cut Pro, the quicker you can upload it to YouTube, give it to your client, and basically get paid. This looks and feels fairly quick. 35%, one minute and 40 seconds in. Done. 4 minutes and 23 seconds. I think that's impressive, but let's find out. Okay, it's the turn of the 24-inch M1 iMac, and the render is ready to go, so finger gymnastics at the ready. Off we go. Just a quick reminder, this is the base model, so it has the 8-core CPU, the 7-core GPU, the 8 gigabytes of unified memory, and the 256 gigabyte SSD. And we are 1 minute and 10 seconds in, and 31% done. I'll tell you what is interesting, the fan has spun up, and that didn't happen on the Intel 5K iMac. Remember the time to beat is 11 minutes and 28 seconds on the 5K iMac and we are 2 minutes and 15 seconds in on this one and it has done 50%. It's a lot quicker. But immediately the gulf between the Intel version and the M1 version in terms of the rendering is apparent and done. 5 minutes and 8 seconds. So the base model 24 inch M1 iMac took roughly half the time to render that piece of footage compared to the Intel 5K iMac. Okay, onto the export and it is the exact same settings, so away we go. The time to beat from the 5K 27 inch iMac on the export is 4 minutes and 23 seconds. And we are 35 seconds in and 11% done. Fun fact, I've never done any video editing on this iMac before, but I have done quite a bit of video editing on the same spec MacBook Air, and that does an amazing job. So I do expect quite big things from this. We are 2 minutes and 57 seconds in and 58% done. This doesn't look very good for the M1 iMac. We're coming up to the Intel time. 4 minutes and 14 seconds, 82, 83% done. Done. 4 minutes and 54 seconds. That's slower than the Intel version by quite a bit. Okay, um, right, on to the M3 iMac. This is again the base model version, so it has an 8-core CPU, an 8-core GPU, which is one more core than the M1 version, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gig SSD. But what's interesting about this M3 chip is that during the Scary Fast event last month, Apple said that it represents the largest leap forward in graphics performance. It's got much faster media engines, everything basically is better in this compared to the M1 when it comes to graphics, so I'm expecting big things. So, here we go, render. Okay, this feels like it's motoring through 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12 seconds in, 15, 16, 17. We are 30 seconds in and 29% done. Sorry, 30% done, 31, 32, 33. Remember, the time to beat is 5 minutes and 8 seconds on the M1 iMac. The fans have come on again, but, but well, whatever, it's really quick. 
done. One minute and 45 seconds. That is seriously impressive. So the Intel version did the render in 11 minutes and 28 seconds. The M1 iMac did it in five minutes and eight seconds. This has just done it in one minute and 45 seconds. But onto the big one, this is the export. So again, just to remind you, the 27 inch 5K iMac from 2017 did the export in four minutes and 23 seconds. And the M1 iMac, which came out in 2021, did it in four minutes and 54 seconds. So about 30 seconds slower. So what can this one do? Here we go, ready? Go, we're 45 seconds in and 15% done. Come on M3, you, you have to beat that Intel machine. There's no way you could be beaten by a 2017 Intel iMac, surely. No fan noise, it's completely silent. We are one minute and 48 seconds in and 35% done. We're approaching two minutes now and it's done 38%. Again, this feels really scarily close. Okay, we've just gone past three minutes and it's done 59%. Oh no, surely not. Surely, surely not, guys. Oh, I'm getting, I'm really genuinely nervous about this. I, I don't know why I didn't make this. Apple made this. I'm just doing a test. Remember, the M1 iMac did it in four minutes and 54 seconds, which is a minute away, and we are at 77%. I've just realized we've got... <laughs> We've gone past the Intel one. So the Intel did it in four minutes and 23 seconds. We're now four minutes and 44 seconds in and it's done 93%. Done. <laughs> Hang on, so the Intel version did it in four minutes and 23 seconds. The M1 iMac did it in four minutes and 54 seconds. And the M3 iMac has just finished the export in four minutes and 53 seconds. So one second quicker than the M1 version, but still about 30 seconds slower than that 27 inch Intel 5K iMac. What does it all mean? Right, okay, after that very rudimentary test, and I can't stress this enough, guys, my tests are very much press a button and see what happens. It's not particularly scientific, they're not proper benchmarks, but they do represent real world usage. And on paper, the M3 iMac smashes the M1 and the Intel version when it comes to rendering. There's a massive gain there. So 11 minutes on the Intel version, about five minutes on the M1 version, and one minute and 45 seconds on the M3. Those are the kind of leaps forward in performance that we want, that we expect, and that we pay for. But those export times, the 27 inch Intel iMac from 2017 was the winner. Four minutes and 23 seconds versus four minutes and 54 seconds on the M1 and four minutes and 53 seconds on the M3. It doesn't make sense. Remember, they're all running the exact same version of Final Cut Pro. It was the same piece of 10 minute 4K footage I was working with. The only difference is that the Intel iMac is running an earlier version of Mac OS, but that's only because that's as far as it goes. It's not supported beyond that. So what's going on? And more importantly, importantly, what should you buy? I think it's quite straightforward, even if Apple won't like this. If you've got an Intel iMac and it works, if it's not crashing, if it's not slowing you down and you can still get things out of the door as quickly as you need to, why change? The only thing to bear in mind is software updates. So as soon as your iMac becomes completely unsupported by Apple, so you can't get the latest Mac OS, and more importantly, you can't get the latest security updates, it's time to move on. Apple wants you to do this. They want Want you to go with the M3 iMac, but you have to be ready for it. However, the M3 iMac is a fantastic machine. Don't take this test as a reason to think it's rubbish or just not worth bothering with, because it is. If you're in the market for one, if you just want a new Mac, if you are fed up of your Intel Mac and it's slowing you down and causing problems, this is wonderful. But I'd love to know what you think about that test that I've just done. It has completely surprised me, I will not lie, but I'd love to know your thoughts. So, get involved below. And if you're wondering, yes, I do have an M3 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro review in the works. To avoid missing that, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And if you fancy some more Mac related content, keep watching for a link.